All right, let's take a look at the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x power. Easiest way to do this is to make a table. Um, so it'd be an x and y table or a x f of x table so we can get ordered pairs. Remember, you come up with the x values. Um, let's try negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we want to take each x, take this x, plug it into the function, and see what you get out. So if I plug in a negative 2, I'm going to get out 2 to the negative 2 power. So that's 1 over 2 squared. You take it to the denominator to make the power positive. So that's 1 over 4. 1 4. When you plug in a negative 1, that's 2 to the negative 1 power. That's 1 over 2 to the first, or 1 half. When you plug in a 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. When you plug in a 1, 2 to the first power is 2. When you plug in a 2, 2 to the second power is 4. Okay, now take those values and sketch it up. All right, so negative 2 on the x, 1 fourth on the y, that's just up just a little. Negative 1 on the x, 1 half on the y, that's up a little more. 0 on the x, 1 on the y, there, 1, 2, and 2, 4. All right. All right, so that's the graph we're looking for. If it's multiple choice, that would be, on this review, that would be B. That's the only one that looks like that. Number two is another graph. It's f of x equals one fifth to the x power. All right, so you want to be careful with what x values you pick here. Um, we'll try to pick the same ones that we picked before, and maybe we can use that. It just really depends. You'll see why once we do it. All right, so x and f of x. Let's try negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So f of negative 2 is 1 fifth to the negative 2 power. And the way that you work that out, if you have a fraction raised to a negative power, you flip the fraction and make the power positive. So that's going to be 5 to the second power. And flip the fraction, it becomes 5 over 1 or 5. 5 to the second power is 25. It's going to be kind of hard to graph 25, so that'll, that'll be you know, way, way, way up there. Um, do the same thing for f of negative 1. If I raise a fraction to a negative power, I flip the fraction and the power becomes positive. So that's going to be, oh, that's going to be 5. F of 0, that's the super easy one because uh, fraction to the 0 power, that's just going to be 1. F of 1 will be 1 fifth to the first power, just 1 fifth. And then f of 2, 1 fifth to the second power, that's going to be 1 25th. And so those are going to be really hard to graph too because they're so small. All right, but let's sketch this thing and give it a try.
All right, so when x is negative 2, y is 25. Well, that's going to be really hard to graph because I'm not going to draw 25 uh, numbers or places up here. So that's, we're just going to say, okay, that's way up here near the top. All right, when x is negative 1, y is 5. Okay. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 1 fifth. And when x is 2, y is 1 twenty fifth. All right, so the, the graph is really close to the x-axis here. And then it goes up, and then it just takes off really fast. Okay? And so there's only one graph that kind of looks like that, right? Let's see. Moving along to number three. Log base four of 16 equals two. Uh, the directions say write the equation in its equivalent exponential form. So that means change this from logarithmic to exponential. Well, what you always want to keep in mind is this little formula here. Y equals log base B of X means B to the Y equals X. All right, so I want to take this logarithmic equation and change it into an exponential equation. So 4 to the second power equals 16. All right, that's C. You leave it just like that. That's all you have to do. Change it to exponential. If not work it out, uh, just leave it like that. And if you look at C, that's the exact same thing that's down there. That easy. If you miss that one, you're probably not trying very hard. But to remember how to do that one, the key is this right here. So I would, you know, write that down as many times as you need to until you can remember that, uh, that formula there. All right, number four. The directions are the same for number four. Log base five of x equals three. We want to change this to exponential. So 5 to the third power equals x. All right, and that is b, as in beta. Number 5, the directions say write the equation in its equivalent logarithmic form. So now we have an exponential equation, and we want to write it in its logarithmic form. So 3 is our base. 2 is what we have the logarithm set equal to. And 9 is what we're taking the logarithm of. So 2 equals log base 3 of 9. And the only difference in their answer is that they say log base 3 of 9 equals 2. They just flip the equation around. Number 5 is C. <coughs> we want to do the same thing on number 6. 2 to the negative 3 power equals 1 eighth. All right, so the base of my logarithm is 2. I'm taking the logarithm of 1 eighth, and that is set equal to negative 3. So log base 2 of 1 eighth equals negative 3. Again, that's C for number 6.
Number seven, the directions say evaluate the expression without using a calculator. Log base two of eight. So this is work out the logarithm. All right, the way that I showed you how to work this out, there's a couple ways actually. Um, the quickest way to work this one out is just to use one of the logarithmic properties. Um, if we can change 8 into 2 to some power, since the base of the logarithm is 2, then the answer will be the power. And we can, right? 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third power. So since I can rewrite this logarithm like this, the base of the logarithm and the base of what I'm taking the logarithm of are the same, the answer is the power. The so number 7 is B as in beta. Right. The other way to work that would be to change it to exponential form. All right, let's try number eight. Same directions. Log base 10 of 100. So if I can change 100 into 10 to some power, then I can apply my property, my logarithmic property. And 100 is 10 to the second power. So since those match up, the answer is what? 2. So number 8 is D. Number 9, log base 10 of 1. Well, if you recall, the log of 1, regardless of what the base is, is always equal to what? 0. So, you know, log base 5 of 1, log base 2 of 1, or in this case, log base 10 of 1 is equal to 0. So my answer is B. B is in beta. Number 10, log base 12 of 12. Well, look, these numbers already match up. The base of the logarithm and this base. What's the power? A 1. So the answer is 1. All right, so number 10 is C. Number 11, log base 5 of 125th. All right, so our goal here is to change 125th into 5 to some power. You say, how in the world am I supposed to do that? Well, let's just work with the fraction a little bit. The denominator is 25, and we all know that 5 squared is 25. So if I just change the 25 in the denominator to 5 squared. Now, you can take this number, move it to the top, but if I move it to the top, if I move it to the numerator, what's that going to do to the power? That's going to change the sign of the power. So if I move 5 squared to the numerator, that becomes 5 to the negative 2 power. All right? So now, the base and the base match up, so the answer is the power, negative 2. Number 11 is A. Right, moving on to number 12. Log base 3 of 2 times 11 and the directions say use the properties of logarithms to expand the log logarithmic expression as much as possible where possible evaluate logarithmic expressions without using a calculator so it says if you can simplify simplify but our main goal here is to expand the logarithm as much as possible All right. Now, I see a product 
on this first logarithm on number 12, log base 3 of 2 times 11. We all know that 2 times 11 is 22, but uh, this problem is written as a product in here for a reason, so that we can apply the product rule for logarithms. And the product rule says, if you take the logarithm of a product, you can rewrite that as the log of each of the factors by taking the sum of those two factors. So uh, log base 3 of 2 times 11 is equal to log base 3 of 2 plus log base 3 of 11. All right, uh, number 13. And that's the answer. That's how you leave it. All right, so that's C. Number 13, log base 6 of 6x. So again, I have the logarithm of a product. So let's rewrite that. Log base 6 of 6 plus log base 6 of x. So we rewrite that as the sum of the log of the two of the product or of each factor. All right, and what is log base 6 of 6? That's something we can simplify. That's right, the base here and the base here are the same. The answer is the power or the exponent. So it's 1 plus log base 6 of x. And that's A, number 13. All right, number 14, log base 2 of 7 over 13. That's equal to log base 2 of 7 minus log base 2 of 13. So we started out with a quotient. We were taking the logarithm of a quotient. So it's uh, log of the numerator minus log of the denominator. So number 14 is A. Number 15, log base 12 of 12 over x. Again, that is a quotient. So apply the quotient rule to expand this. That will be log base 12 of the numerator minus log base 12 of the denominator. All right, so now log base 12 of 12 can be reduced because the base of the logarithm and the base of what we're taking the logarithm of are the same. So the answer for that logarithm is just the power. The power is 1 there. So it's 1 minus log base 12 of x. So number 15 is D, as in delta. All right, number 16, log base 5 of x to the third power. I don't see a product. I don't see a quotient. But I do see a power there. And so let's apply the power rule. This is probably the most powerful rule that we've covered the entire semester, in my opinion, no pun intended, because moving an exponent is a really big deal, even though you may not, may not realize that. Uh, anytime you can take an exponent and just move it, that's, that's really crazy. So uh, I can move this power in front. This becomes 3 times log base 5 of x. It's almost like we just work magic even though you don't know we did because it's, it's that big of a deal. Alright? So number 16 is B. The answer is B. Number 17 log base 6 of 7 times 11 over 13. Alright, so 
it's written like this because they want us to expand this as much as possible. Uh, we all know that 7 times 11 is, is 77, but it's written as 7 times 11 for a reason because they want us to expand this as far as we can. All right, so make sure you don't make that 77. Um, the first thing that we do with expanding logarithms is we check to see if we can apply the quotient rule if it's a problem that has multiple steps. So I can apply the quotient rule. Uh, I do have a quotient, so this will be log base 6 of the numerator minus log base 6 of the denominator. Now after you've applied the quotient rule, then you want to try to apply the power rule if at all possible. No, not the power rule, sorry. The product rule if at all possible. And I do have a product right here. So let's apply the product rule. So that's log base 6 of 7 plus log base 6 of 11. I guess I don't have to put these parentheses. And then I have minus log base 6 of 13. After you've applied the quotient rule and, and uh, product rule, if you can apply the power rule anywhere, then you want to do that. Okay? Um, there's no powers to move on this one. There's no way to change 7, 11, or 13 into 6 to some power easily. So that's our answer. That is that logarithm completely expanded. All right, so number 17 is D, as in delta. Number 18, log base 3 of the square root of 11x. So if you start out with a, you're taking the logarithm of a product or a quotient that's raised to a power, um, it's kind of like that power, that exponent is, is holding the problem hostage. It's, it's, it's there stopping you from doing anything to the problem. We can't apply any uh, of our logarithmic properties because of the power. You say, well, I don't see a power. I just see a radical. Well, remember, if it's a square root, square root is the same thing as raising something to the one-half power. So I have log base 3 of 11x raised to the one-half power. So I want to take this power first and move it. I want to apply the power rule first because that power, that exponent, is what's holding us up from doing anything else. So we want to take that one-half and move it in front. So that's one-half times log base 3 of 11x. Now that I've applied that rule, that power rule, uh, I can now apply the product rule. All right, so this is one-half times, and that one-half is going to be times everything that I do now because it's in front. So one-half times log base 3 of 11 plus log base 3 of x. Now, if I look down there for my answer, I don't see it, not right away anyway. Um, what they did on their choices, they took the one-half and they distributed it back times both logarithms. So they have one-half times log base 3 of 11 plus one-half times log base 3 of x. So that is b as in beta. Alright, number 19 log base 2 of x plus 4 over x to the sixth. Alright, so I'm taking the logarithm of a quotient. So let's first apply the quotient rule. So that's log base 2 of x plus 4 minus log base 2 
of x to the sixth. All right, so you might want to try, I mean, in your mind, since we are doing a lot of adding and subtracting with logarithms, when you see this x plus 4, your mind may want to tell you to try to do something, but you can't. This is the logarithm of a sum of something. You can't break that up. That has to stay like that. Okay? Alright, so now we would want to apply the product rule if there was a product, but there's not. Now let's see if there are any powers. There is a power. So let's take this power and move it in front of the logarithm. So this is log base 2 of x plus 4 minus 6 log base 2 of x. Okay, so number 19 is a. Now number 20, the directions change. They say use properties of logarithms to condense the logarithmic expressions. Write the expression as a single logarithm whose coefficient is 1. Where possible, evaluate logarithmic expressions. Alright, so we want to condense this logarithm as far as we can. That means we want to make it as small as possible. All right, so our first problem we're given is log base 6 of x minus 6 minus log base 6 of x minus 1. Now, in order to apply any of our logarithmic properties backwards, the logarithms have to be to the same base. So notice they're both to the, the base of 6. That's important. All right, now I see that I'm subtracting these logarithms. See this minus sign right here. That tells us that we can apply the quotient rule backwards. So I want to say that's equal to log base 6 of, and now since that's a, that was a minus, the quotient rule tells us to make a fraction. The numerator of the fraction is going to be whichever logarithm was first, whatever I was evaluating first, the x minus 6 and the denominator is going to be x minus 1. All right. And there's nothing else we can simplify. Don't think you can cancel anything out or anything like that that doesn't work. So that's your final answer. All right, so number 20 <clears throat> is B. All right, number 21 5 times natural log of x minus 8 minus 4 times natural log of x. Now don't, don't let it confuse you that you see natural log because natural log has all the same properties as a regular log. Natural log is just a special kind of logarithm. Remember it's log base e. And it's so important that it actually has a different name. It's natural log. All right, so the first thing we want to do here is if we have any numbers in front of the logarithms, we want to apply the power rule. So see, so I have a 5 here, so I want to bring that up here as the power. We have a 4 here. I want to bring that up there as a power. So this is natural log of x minus 8 raised to the fifth power minus natural log of x raised to the fourth power. All right, now that I've applied the power rule, notice that there's a minus between the two logarithms. This minus right here. That tells me that I can apply the quotient rule backwards. So that's equal to the natural log of x minus 8 raised to the fifth over x to the fourth. All right. 
So if you look down there, that is D, as in delta. Number 21 is D. All right, number 22 says, solve the equation by expressing each side as a power of the same base and then equating exponents. Uh, to me, what that means, all that stuff means solve this equation, okay? So that's 4 to the 1 plus 2x power equals 64. We want to change each side to the same base raised to a power. Now we have two options here. Either we could change both sides to 2 to some power, or we could see if we could change 64 into 4 to some power. That would be the easiest way is to change if, if we can change 64 into 4 to some power um, that way that would keep it as simple as possible. You'll get the same answer either way it's just going to require a little more work if we change both sides to 2 to some power. So let's change the right side into 4 to some power. Can we? Yes. 64 is 4 to the third power. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And so since we have the same base, what we do now is we set the exponents equal. So 1 plus 2x equals 3. All right, now solve this linear equation. Subtract 1 from both sides. So 2x equals 2. That gives us x equals 1. Alright, so that's your answer. Number 22 is D, as in delta. Number 23, solve the exponential equation. Express the solution set in terms of natural logarithms. Okay, so E to the x plus 5 power equals 2. All right, so we want to solve for x, but it's trapped as an exponent. If there was only some magical property that would allow me to move exponents, well, there is. There's a, there's a logarithmic property that allows me to move exponents. It says that if you're taking the logarithm of something to a power, then you can move the power in front of the logarithm. So what I need to do here is I need to take the natural log of both sides. You say, why did you choose natural log? Um, natural log is just generally best to choose. We'll leave it at that. All right, so I took the natural log of both sides. You know, if this is an equation, as long as whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, then that's okay. So now, let's take this power and move it in front. And make sure you move the entire power in front and you leave it in parentheses. So this is x plus 5 times the natural log of e, well, that looks very familiar, equals the natural log of 2. The reason why I say that looks familiar is because isn't natural log log base e? Yes. And so since natural log is log base e, and that's of e, those match up. So it can be simplified into just 1. So if this right here is just 1, it goes away. So I have x plus 5 equals the natural log of 2. Now how do I solve for x? Just subtract 5 from both sides. Now be careful here because the untrained mathematician might would want to say, okay, this is the natural log of 2 minus 5, so that's negative 3. No. This is the natural log of 2 minus 5. This is its own term. Okay? So that is A. Number 23 is A.
All right, 24. Solve the logarithmic equation. Be sure to reject any value that is not in the domain of the original logarithmic expressions. Give the exact answer. So they want an exact answer here. That means, you know, if we have to take a logarithm of something, we want to do that. Also, it told us, be sure to reject any value that's not in the domain of the original logarithmic expression. What that means is, once you've solved, if you plug your answer in and you're taking the logarithm of a negative number, then it doesn't work. That's basically what that means by reject any value. So number 24 is log base 2 of x equals 5. We want to solve for x. All right, the way that there's a couple ways we could do that, but the easiest way would be to change this into its exponential form. We can write this logarithm as an exponent by saying, or an ex in exponential form by saying, 2 to the fifth power equals x. All right? Base to this power equals what you're taking the logarithm of. And what's 2 to the fifth power? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 32. x equals 32 is your answer. All right, and plugging that back in, I would be taking the logarithm of a positive number, so that's good. So number 24 is C. Last problem, number 25. Log base 4 of x plus 3 plus log base 4 of x minus 3 equals 2. All right, so what I would suggest doing first is condensing this logarithm. These two logarithms are to the same base. We have a plus between them. So that means that we can write this as the product of these two things I'm taking the log base 4 of. All right, now work that product out. If you work that product out, you're going to have log base 4 of, that's going to be x squared, then minus 3x plus 3x, so those middle terms cancel out, and then plus 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. Alright, so that is, that's simplified as far as we can go. Now to solve for x, what we want to do is change this to exponential. So I'm going to have 4 to the second power equals x squared minus 9, right? Base to this power equals what we're taking the logarithm of. So I have 16 equals x squared minus 9. Let's solve for x. This is a quadratic. But there's no middle term. There's no x term. So we can use the square root property to solve this pretty quick. So get the x squared by itself by adding 9 to both sides. And we'll have 25 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides. So x equals what? Plus or minus 5. Now, when you plug in a positive 5, into the two logarithms. Is that okay? Yes. You'll get a positive here and a positive here. When you plug in a negative 5, is that okay? No. If I plug a negative 5 in right here, I'm taking the logarithm of a negative number. If I plug a negative 5 here, I'm taking the logarithm of a negative number. Neither one of those is okay. So that means that the answer is just x equals positive 5. The negative 5 does not work. That ends your test review.